Hello everyone, my name is Ned Finn. Welcome to Oh Jesus, the music is very bad, and we're going to throw it into the fire. Uh, uh, uh make it stop. <sighs> Hello everyone. Happy holidays. Um, welcome to the stream. We are going to be streaming uh, two hours of Viscera Cleanup Detail, Santa's Rampage today. Um, and uh, we should be having a fun time. Born Loser in chat. Hello. Good to see you here as per usual. Um, so this this is going to be even like more freeform and rambly than uh, my typical uh, streams. Mostly because... For once, I'm subjecting myself to something that I don't really have to pay super close attention to. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to be interacting with, with chat even more. I'm going to be talking up a storm. Uh, as promised, I uh, will follow up on a point that I made in my Dark Souls stream. I'm going to be talking about uh, why tower shields are bad and should not be used uh, in Dungeons & Dragons uh, 3.5 at least. Um, uh, based on, on real evidence this time while I clean up uh, Santa's workshop. And I'm going to talk about other things. I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, probably Christmassy stuff at some point. Hello, Anonymous, in chat. And indeed, uh, something uh, a bit over the top has... Uh, I, I think things have gotten out of hand at the um, the North Pole, it would appear. Um, I'm just kind of cleaning up the... Uh, <clears throat> oh, goodness. The uh, the elf bodies for now. I think I'm going to bust out my first... First biohazard containment bin. Um, the, the whole elf bodies, I think we should just throw directly into the... Uh, into the fire for now. Yes, yes, and, and I'm. I, it's not even um, necessarily uh, tower shields in all versions of D and D. Just specifically uh, three point five, which is the edition that I'm most uh, intimately familiar with. I've played a little bit of uh, fourth edition. Um, and I, I have some passing familiarity with 5e, which is the current uh, version. Um, I also I, I have some passing familiarity with the first edition of um, uh, Pathfinder, which has now moved into its second edition, uh, which means that I am truly behind on uh, everything. I guess I don't need to clean up the presents necessarily, but fuck it. We can throw those into the uh, into the fire as well. Ha <laughs> ha! Topical jokes from uh, from anonymous there. Yeah, no, this is. Um, I I th I'm I'm gonna say that at least um, I'm gonna get a little political here and say that at least half the the elf deaths here are directly the responsibility of uh, Postmaster General Louis DeJoy who, uh, after a great deal of time of uh, requests and pressure, the postal service, uh, the, like the, the office of the, post, of the Postmaster General, finally released DeJoy's schedule only to see that it was heavily redacted. And when I mean heavily redacted, I or when I say heavily redacted, I mean extremely heavily redacted, which is suspicious to say the least. But, you know, it's... Uh, it's all going to be over soon, and we're going to have someone who sucks slightly less in office. Yay. Um, but as has been previously mentioned, I'm going to keep my, uh, my political prognostications on this channel uh, relatively uh, limited. Not non-existent, because I can't help myself. Um, but, you know, limited nonetheless. Limited and, and fairly diffuse. Um... But, uh, yeah, so I, I, I looked it up. First of all, I want to issue a correction 
that I made. I said that there were um, uh, three categories, well, three major categories of weapons in D&D uh, 3.5. Um, that they were uh, simple weapons, light weapons, and martial weapons. This is not the case. There are just simple weapons and martial weapons, and then um, light weapons are a subcategory within both of those. So there are simple weapons that are also categorized as light weapons. There are martial weapons that are also categorized as light weapons. Um, light weapons are basically very small, easy-to-use um, uh, one-handed weapons that can be easily wielded offhand, uh, at least f by characters who uh, have that sort of proficiency. Uh, uh, wielding weapons offhand uh, without the proper feats is sort of a fool's errand. You're very unlikely to hit stuff with them, but, you know, it is what it is. You can do it, you just probably shouldn't. Yes, itty, itty, bitty pieces. Um, oh, shit, I just scattered, like, four of my fucking shells. Um, but, however, I was correct that, um, that tower shields require their own special proficiency to, uh, to wield. I'm not gonna put those in individually. I can just load these in the bucket. It's fine. They're not bloody. They're not gonna dirty the water. Um... <gasps> Hello, Endergod in chat, the artist, the commenter formerly known as Ian Kassane. Um, I've noticed that you've gotten yourself a fancy schmancy, uh, uh, like, profile thumbnail as well, uh, confirming my suspicion that the name was a Minecraft reference. Uh, we're going to be streaming uh, about two hours of Viscera Cleanup Detail Santa's Rampage in the interest of the holidays. Um, uh, although I can hardly recommend this first... Uh, part of the stream because I'm just going to spend it complaining about a piece of equipment from an RPG system that is, uh, at this point, massively out of date. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so, um, for starters, uh, tower shields do require their own separate, um, uh, proficiency. And yes, don't, don't think I haven't seen your, uh, your pun uh, anonymous. I just only got it now. That's why I'm commenting on it. I'm like, what is she talking? Oh yeah, right. I think um, Ed Ed and Eddie is is going to be coming to HBO Max soon because um, I know I think Warner Brothers or maybe their parent company owns uh, Cartoon Network. So there's already some content uh, on there. Like I believe South Park is on. Um, HBO Max, as is, um, Rick and Morty, which I think is Cartoon Network. Um, like, yeah, that's part of the Adult Swim block, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but there's some other, uh, Cartoon Network stuff coming to the, uh, streaming platform, which is probably something that I wouldn't actually pay for myself, but I have AT&T, um, which is how I'm able to deliver this delightful, uh, streaming content to you at relatively good quality. Um... Uh, wirelessly, where otherwise I'd have to hook up a, uh, I'd probably have to hook up the, uh, the old Ethernet cable to the router, which would present its own, uh, series of logistical challenges, but that's neither here nor there. Um, let's see here. Um, why am I just putting elves into the fire? Because, uh, they're dead. And I must uh, rid myself of the their corpse bits. Um, uh, for for those not familiar, uh, this for cleanup detail is uh, one of those wacky uh, work simulators with the uh, added twist that it's uh, utterly ridiculous. Normally, you're you're cleaning up like sort of uh, s basically you're you're cleaning up after a Doom game has happened, you're, you're cleaning up, like, you know, the the corpses and, and parts of corpses of, like, marines and scientists and the various monsters that massacred them, uh, but for the, the holiday DLC, uh, which came out yonks ago now, 
for uh, Santa's Rampage, you are cleaning up the aftermath of a uh, homicidal uh, outburst from jolly old Saint Nick himself. Which, honestly, at this point, um, uh, Santa going postal, I feel, is, is almost is a little bit passe at this point. But you know, it's still fun for the uh, for the content. I'm using it for them good views. And uh, probably, if if not an elf's leg, um, Ender God, it was. Um, an elf arm. One of the two. There's gonna be plenty of those. I know that, um, the, the stables are a thing, and we're gonna have to deal with the, uh, the guts in that as well. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, returning to my, uh, tower shield issues. Um, separate proficiency, number one. You have to take a separate feat uh, which is a limited uh, resource. You get uh, feats when you level up. Um, and some classes get extra feats, bonus feats, that sort of thing. Um, fighters in particular get lots of bonus feats. Um, in, in lieu of more, like, rigid class features. Um, but, uh, so you're already using that up. Unless you're a fighter, fighters begin with... Um, uh, tower shield proficiency and only fighters. Paladins do not get them, which makes sense because uh, no one wants tower shield proficiency. Um, here's part of the, the probably the the biggest like core issue, um, and actually these um, those sticks of dynamite are dynamite are going to prove challenging to deal with if we're not careful because we are going to have to dispose of them in the fire and um, if we're not careful they will explode and cause more more problems than they're going to fix um, oh, Jesus big problem number one right is uh, they weigh 45 pounds which is triple the next shield in the light up. The heavy steel shield weighs 15 pounds. Yeah, see, you can hear them. That's the fuses trying to go off, but keeping them in the water uh, is, is preventing them from exploding. Um... And, like, equipment load is something that you have to worry about. Um, like, okay, so let's, let's say you're, you're playing a human fighter, right? And let's say you got very, very lucky and you actually rolled an 18 uh, during ability score generation. And you put that into your strength because you want to be a big, burly lad. Um, and the 18 is the highest you can roll during ability score generation. Um, that is going to put your carrying capacity at, I believe, your 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 light carrying load, which is the load that you can operate with um, without any kind of penalties to speed or um, skill checks uh, for stuff like um, swimming, climbing, jumping, sort of physical exertion stuff. Um, if you're over encumbered, basically you take a penalty to those uh, those checks, those dice rolls, right? And, um, so your, your, your light load as a 16 strength character is going to be, I believe, 100 pounds. So, you've already taken up, um, like, almost half of that with your stupid frickin' shield. Even if you were, let's, let's say you're playing a half-orc, which gets a bonus to uh, their strength score. Um, it's a plus two bonus. Um... That still puts your carrying capacity at, I believe, um, uh, 133 pounds, which means you're still taking up over a third of your carrying capacity with this one stupid shield. And you also want to be carrying, um, uh, you know, your weapon, for starters, uh, which probably won't weigh that much unless you're using, like, a freaking hammer, um, like a big-ass hammer, but, like... Still, you gotta worry about your weapon. You gotta worry about the uh, the weight of the rest of your armor, um, and 
you know, it's it's just a big old honking shield that doesn't confer like massive bonuses except for it, it provides cover from ranged attacks, which is nice ish, but I think I'd just as soon Oh, don't fall, thank you. I, I would just as soon not and not have to lug around a forty-five pound piece of equipment. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Oh, also, um, not that you should be using one without the uh, the proficiency in the first place, but if for some reason you do, um, the armor check penalty is like negative ten, which means if, if you just you might as well not do it. Like if if you try to freaking I don't know. Uh, and I'm, actually, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to recall, and I need to get off this topic because I, I can feel the boredom accumulating. Um, like, uh, I'm trying to remember if, if armor check penalties apply to characters who are not, just to characters who are not proficient, or... Uh, to all characters using that equipment. I do not recall, and I will. I am not going to go and consult my physical copy of the player's handbook um, to uh, to double check that. But suffice it to say, there's you're you're, you're just better off using a normal ass shield. That that uh, the heavy steel shield. It's right there. It only weighs. 15 pounds, you'll be fine. You don't need to block against arrows that badly. You're a fighter. You have the hit points to take it. Like, at level 1, you're probably rocking out with, like, you know, uh, what, probably around, like, 14, 15 hit points, while the wizard is stuck with, like, maybe 6 if he put a lot into his constitution. I don't know, it just... Oh, Jesus, I've got bloody footprints. But bloody fucking boots. Alright, let me read chat here. Uh... Okay, so... Um, got... Uh, from Anonymous. Uh, just want to know why you can't have a potion of super strength or a spell of lightning in your armor. Um... Uh, and then from Endergod, I sound like another YouTuber uh, called Captain Sauce. I am not familiar with Captain Sauce, but I, I might have to give that a look, at least to to confirm the uh, the similarity. I promise you that I am not Captain Sauce moonlighting as someone with uh, below 30 subscribers. Um, but I'm seeing we've got uh, six people watching. We've got uh, three active chat participants, which is always uh, nice. And of course, of course, I've got my good friends Born Loser and, and Anonymous. Uh, always showing up in chat, giving me that good support, um, and and you know, so here here is as as a Christmas gift to myself, I am going to uh, do the thing that I should say in every stream, which is by all means make sure to like the video, um, uh, which will in some meaningful way help my analytics theoretically, insofar as they can. But hey, Ender God found my. Uh, my video, uh, my my Isaac stream originally, he's been showing up like a real trooper. So you know, every little bit helps. Clearly, um, and uh, to to Anonymous's point, yes, um, uh, I know. I'm trying to think. Like th there are certain types of materials that you can use. Like I, I believe. Um, Tower shields are actually, like, made primarily of wood, at least, like, the standard version is, and then they are, like, reinforced with uh, metal, probably, like, metal to rim it, um, to, like, uh, to, to frame the shield, and then probably metal studs to reinforce it further. Um, uh, you could, in theory, and, and, of course, this stuff is all up to your DM, um, to your dungeon master, who's, who's the, the person calling all the shots. Um... Presumably, you could even just use non-magical special materials um, to uh, to reinforce it. Like, I believe adamantine is lighter than steel, and I believe that dark wood might be lighter than normal wood. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but, uh, and there are, I know that there are um, certain types of weapons that are 
uh, much lighter than they normally would be. Sun blades, for instance, are uh, they're magical bastard swords, which is to say, like hand and a half swords, um, that can be wielded as if they were a short sword. Um, so there, de there's definitely precedent. Um, as for the, you know, like a, a potion of super strength, there are, I, I think there are potions that would, yeah, yeah, because there's like potions of cat's grace and stuff. Um, so there, there's got to be, um, as, as, as hateful as these words will be to chat, um, and to myself, but there are like probably potions of bear's strength. Um, hateful, of course, because of the strong anti-bear sentiment on this channel. Um... Justifiably as well, bears are uh, hateful creatures. Um, but like, you can have a potion of bear strength, which would up your uh, your ability. You could also, um, you know, use uh, something like a um, like gauntlets of ogre power or something, which is another strength increasing item. Um, there's definitely ways of improving your strength, and and you improve your ability scores. Uh, slowly um, over time. Um, you increase... You get to increase one ability score by one point every four levels, which should indicate um, how important it is to allocate those points uh, smartly at the beginning of the game, because your ba those base scores are more likely to go up through the use of magic and enchantments than um, the natural increases, which makes a certain amount of sense. Like, your, like, your, your, your base, like, constitution, your base resistance to, to damage and poisons and stuff is, that feels like something that's a little bit, uh, sort of laid into you on a, on a physiological level, um, that would only increase very slowly over time. Even something like strength, like, it's, it's to be presumed that, um... That like as 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 a as an adventurer, you're already probably going to be in like pretty peak physical condition. That's not necessarily the case. You could, I mean, obviously, like a wizard is going to be weaker than like in terms of raw physical strength than a fighter. Um, but you know, let's see here. Um, uh, Ender God, do I need to burn the Santa hats or no? Not necessarily, but you know, I'm I'm going. I'm just kind of, you know, grabbing what I can. I don't need to burn the presents either, but I can, so I will. Um, I don't think that these are getting delivered this year, honestly. Um, let's burn this fucking chair as well. I don't care for it. That's 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 some old uh, Sims 3 rage as well. Um, in The Sims 3, whenever you put down a rocking chair, your Sims fucking magnetize to the thing. They cannot get enough of sitting in a damn rocking chair. Um... If there's a bag of holding, there should be a shield of carrying. Um, um, and uh, uh, why do you, uh, from Born Loser, why do tower shields get the shaft? Um, it's it's mostly we have uh, strong impulses from chat to burn everything. Uh, that might be a little bit difficult concerning some of these um, these higher ornaments, but we certainly can't. We definitely need to get this fella down. Um, let's see if we can't. Oh, Jesus. Um, so, fun th fact about um, uh, bags of holding. Um, so, th there are two items that function very similarly in D&D. In &D. There's the bag of holding, which does about what it, it sounds like it would. And then there's a portable hole, which is, uh, when not in use, it kind of looks like a, just a black cloth. But you can um, lay it down, and then it, it acts as like a little an entrance to basically a pocket dimension that you can go into and grab stuff out of. Um, if you put one of those items in the other, um, first of all, it destroys both items. Um, but it also, in one case, I do not remember which is which, one of those arrangements will open up a small portal to, I want to say, the astral plane, and then the other is like a more violent rip which just, like, teleports everything in a, uh, a small radius to the astral plane. I believe, again, I believe it's the astral plane. It might be the ethereal plane, but I'm fairly certain it's astral. Um, um, uh, 
Um, uh, Born Loser, if you have to clean up the mess, the least you could do is ruin the rest of their Christmas. Um, honestly, I, I think I think Christmas is already pretty fucking ruined, y'all. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I don't think... I don't think there's, there's much salvaging this uh, situation. Can I rip the paintings off the walls? It does not appear so. Um... But, um, and incidentally, um, uh, finding yourself accidentally on the astral plane, not the best, uh, not the best thing to do, um, frankly, um, because it can be very difficult to get back. You'll get off the astral plane eventually. Um, there are, uh, doorways into other dimensions, or I say other dimensions, other, uh, planes all over the place, but, um... Getting back home is another matter entirely. Uh, not not to mention you'll have to deal with uh, the... I want to say it's the Githyanki, uh, who are a race of astral plane-faring pirates, essentially, and the astral dreadnoughts, which are these giant behemoths uh, that f uh, feast on unprepared uh, astral travelers. I will say, this fire is doing good work in terms of consuming, uh, like, everything that gets thrown at it. And, um, I apologize for the, uh, the frame rate. Um, uh, this is mostly the game's fault. Um, this is just not the most, uh, stable map in the game. I think it's because of the abundance of objects in a relatively small, uh, area. I'm cycling through these fucking items, and I just want my hands back. Um... Let's see how much of this debris we can get into, like, one of our buckets. Um, I'll tell you what, I've, I've said it before and I'll, I'll say it again. All this, like, talking about D&D always makes me miss playing the game. That's some good frickin' times. Um, so you're born, burn more objects so you can get more frames more, uh, per second. That is a good idea. We are gonna claw back our frames bit by bit by cleaning out this this godforsaken workshop. I don't think of any other interesting stuff. Like I'm I, I'm I can be quite the uh, the font of D and D information because I have. Um, probably the better part of, like, 40 or 50 pounds in books, um, on, on third edition. Like, there are a bunch of supplemental, uh, material out there for the game. Um, and I have, not all of it, but I, I would actually say that of, of, like, the official, um, Wizards of the Coast published, uh, source material, uh, sort like, books for, um... For th uh, 3.5, and, and even a little bit of 3rd edition, I probably have the majority of them. Um, but a couple that I, I don't have, I, I never got the, um, the complete, uh, the complete divine or the complete mage. Um, but I did get the complete scoundrel and the complete warrior, which were like the, the rogue set and the, uh, fighter set. Um, of, uh... Sort of, of, of supplemental material. Um, the Complete Warrior is also the uh, the book that introduced, if, if memory serves, the uh, the Rage Mage, which is a prestige class uh, specifically designed for those extremely rare wizard barbarian um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Multiclassers. Um, which is just a uh, Frankly, pretty bizarre. Uh, it's a bizarre build, but you know, if that's what you want to do, you can do it. Um, and uh, oh yes, anonymous. I, um, it's 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 not something that I I do much of anymore, just because of how um, how demanding it is, not only of of like 
my time personally, but also like it's just it's really difficult to uh, to arrange like a regular weekly session. Um, but I'm I'm a big old fan of uh, of D and I got into it in um, like late middle school and then um, a bit through high school and then I really took off in um, in college when I had like a group of people whose schedules were consistent we had free time in the evenings and we were doing like um, like three to four hours uh, twice a night or twice a week in um, uh, for a little spell there because we had two separate campaigns going on which was probably a little bit excessive uh, but you know Smoke them while you got them, as they say. Doing an awful lot of talking. I need to pause and take a, a sip of my drink. <sighs> okay, so uh, from uh, from Born Loser, um, uh, here's a question for a D and D nerd. That would be moi. Um, uh, which video game comes closest to it? Um, you know, its influence is everywhere, but what is the closest? Honestly, um, and that would depend a little bit on um, sort of how close you're looking to get. Because, um, uh, like, Knights of the Old Republic and its uh, sort of fantasy derivative um, Neverwinter Nights are literally built on, like, the a lot of the rule set of 3rd edition D&D. &D. Um uh, you also have stuff like, um, uh, like the Baldur's Gate series, which was uh, directly inspired by tabletop role playing. Um, uh, I, I know a lot of people have favorably compared um, uh, the Divinity series to uh, to D and D, um, and it's it's a lot of those comparisons are based on like mechanical similarities and the degree to which it allows for, like, creative problem-solving, um, as well as, like, the, 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 the dearth of, not dearth, the breadth of, um, the breadth of, like, role-playing options, um, and, uh, to, to answer really quickly, um, uh, Anonymous's question, um, uh, are there simplified versions of it for... Well, I I, I... I... I would not go so far as to... or Not even so far. Like, Anonymous, you are, you are not not dumb people. It's just... I, I think it's for people who don't have the, the time that, like, high school and college may had. College may... So that, that time was a bit of an illusion. Um, but, but certainly high school age may had to, to figure all this stuff out. Honestly, like, the, the core rule books... Of, of of any of the systems is a like a pretty focused version of the game um, from from what I, I know of it like fifth edition seems like it's uh, pretty easy uh, to get into like they've substantially uh, streamlined a lot of the systems and it seems a lot more focused on um, sort of allowing the rather than having to do what you would have to do in in fourth edition and certainly in th uh, third edition in 3.5 um where you had all of like th th those 3.5 in particular took a very maximalist design approach to uh to actions in the game so that most everything had like an actual like book and page number you could um, refer to to get a specific, like, um, Watsy published, like, rule on what you were trying to do. Which is good and bad. It allows things to stay very consistent. On the other hand, it means that you're going to be doing a lot of, of Googling slash flipping through pages to make sure that you're doing everything quote unquote correctly. Whereas, like, from, from what I've seen mostly through, like, D&D &D playing podcasts. Um, uh, the Adventure Zone, it's good stuff. Um, it seems like 5th uh, edition, um, which I, I, I believe is also, like, sort of under the heading of D&D of &D Next, I think they were calling it for a while, but, but 5A seems really focused on giving the Dungeon Master latitude to sort of arbitrate rules decisions themselves. And a lot of that seems to go into the advantage system, 
uh, where so in in very briefly in D and D, most actions are tied to the rolling of a twenty sided dice. You roll it, you add or subtract whatever relevant modifiers you have, and then the result is compared to like a target number, and then your success is dependent on on the results of that, right? Um, in 3.5 in particular, the game loved dealing out these little like plus two, minus two circumstantial bonuses and little, little you know, all these little bonuses that you could get for, for fulfilling certain things, for s certain, um, uh, you know, for just, you get my point, lots of bonuses for lots of different things. Um, in... Uh, 5e, there's the advantage and disadvantage system, where if you have advantage, um, which is to say that there's something about your circumstances that, like, puts you at an advantage for whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, let's say that you are, as, as a very simple example, you are in a melee, you're a melee attacking uh, an opponent from above. You have the high ground, insert Revenge of the Sith joke here. Um... Uh, at that point, you have advantage. So you would roll two d20s, that's a 20-sided dice, and uh, you would use the higher result. Like, that is a much more simplified system. Now, it means that, like, there's a little bit more left, <clears throat> left up to chance. Like, if you were a character, and I guess this is a bad example because you still have, like, skill bonuses and stuff, but whatever. You, you get my point. Rather than having to, like, keep track of all these little um, bespoke bonuses to this or that action, instead you have a much more simple system of, like, okay, this is the situation that you're in. Uh, you have advantage. Now roll your dice. Move your mice. Everybody gets hurt. Um, a fucking VeggieTales reference right there, my friends. That is me showing up my uh, my conservative Christian upbringing. Um, uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah. So like, if if someone were to come up to me and say like, I want to get into D and D as simply as I could, um, I would say first of all, make sure that you have people that you can reliably play it with, and then get a, a 5e starter set. Um, like, sight unseen without me have ever actually, like, I've never, I've, I've never played 5th edition, um, I've, I've only heard it played, um, but, like, that would be my recommendation, to, to spend the, the 25 or 30 dollars, however much, however much it is, uh, to get a, the, the starter box, um, and just, just go from there, and if you like it, then, you know, you get the core rulebooks, you get the monster manual, the player's handbook, and the dungeon master's guide, um, and you kind of go from there. Um, but yeah, that, that would be, um, 5th edition seems like it's pretty easy to get into, um, uh, from, from what I've heard, the character creation process is, uh, looks pretty streamlined, uh, which <laughs> is not the case for 3rd edition, depending upon if you're going with, uh, you know, extra, like, if, if you just, like, I'm going to play a dwarf fighter, or I'm going to play an elf cleric, like, simple enough, but you're like, I want to play a Gitziri ninja. It's like, okay, fuck you, man. We have to look at, like, two, we need, suddenly you find yourself having to open up three books simultaneously, the player's handbook, um, the expanded psionics handbook, I think, and the, um, the... Um, what is it? The the complete scoundrel? No, no, no. The complete adventurer. That's the one that had the um, the ninja class in it, um, which is just like kind of a rogue, but worse. But also not like the ninja's kind of cool. Um, I just think the rogue is probably better. Um, you could play a very ninja-like character just by playing the rogue. Um, now that's got nothing on the samurai, uh, which is like a paladin, but substantially worse. Um, and, uh, to your question, Anonymous, what is my alignment? That's a good question. I think, honestly, the vast majority of people probably fall into, like, a, a true neutral or a neutral good, uh, alignment. Um, I once played a, uh, a chaotic neutral character who was a little bit crazy. That was fun. Um, uh, but, but typically, like, um... You know, I've 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 typically played characters who are, who are probably like neutral good, um, or you know, like there actually there are some character classes that require, um, 
align that have like re uh, alignment requirements. Um, paladins are very stringent; they have to be lawful good. Um, and th now there are, there are supplemental rules that allow you to to not do that, which like a lawful pa evil paladin I could kind of get, but then there's like rules in um, I, uh, what is it, Unearthed Arcana, which is a book with a bunch of like alternative rule sets um, that introduces like rules for uh like chaotic good and chaotic evil paladins which like fucking no um i'm sorry that's just like paladins are, are are defined in my mind at least by like their extremely rigid codes so like a lawful evil paladin i could kind of get behind especially if in like particular types of settings but um See, these are Molotov cocktails. Those are going to be a problem if, um... Well, that, that solves it. Cool. Um, those would be a problem if uh, left to fall into the fire. Um, but, uh... <clears throat> and then you have uh, barbarians, which have to be some kind of chaotic, um, and bards, which who cannot be lawful, I think. Um, which always struck me as a little bit weird, but, um, you know, whatever. Um, uh, let's see here. T -t 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 uh, what class are locked behind lawful alignment? Um, uh... There, because, like, the, the base assumption of, like, the rule books going in. Like, it's... d d is very much based around, like, playing as a hero, going off and, and doing good and fighting evil, um, which is certainly not the only way that the game can be played, but it's kind of how the game is orientated, right? Um, there, there... And I think that this is appropriate. There are no classes that are locked behind um, uh, an evil alignment. There is at least one prestige class that I can think of. Um, and, and prestige classes, for context, are, um, okay, so let, let me actually go back a little bit further. I didn't intend for this to become the D&D &D stream, but I'm, I'm so into it. Um, I'm not going to complain. I can absolutely talk about D&D &D for, um, for two hours. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so about that right now. Um, <clears throat> so, let me think here. Um... Sorry, I, I got distracted watching the playback. I was trying to figure out how, how big of a delay there is. Um, but uh, anyway, um, so in in 3.5 in particular, um, I, I know that 4th edition had a weird way of doing this, and I don't know what the story on this in um, 5e is. But in in third edition and three point five, terms I will use interchangeably because they're they're very similar rule sets. Like third edition was released, and then three point five was released a little bit later as like to to clean up some of the rules. Um, like is 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 it cool if I just say, um, oh my, we found the elf gore nest, y'all. Um, I'm gonna just start saying third edition. Uh, for for simplicity's sake, and understand, I'm mostly referring to the updated third edition, which is to say 3.5. Um, in third edition, there is a system. What is this achievement that I got? Um, I do not know. Maybe I burnt all the Santa hats. I'm not sure. Um, oh god, I'm just making the mess worse up here. Ugh, I need my bucket. Um, so in third edition. You could, um, hello, big country. I have bad news for you, Biggs. We're talking about D&D &D on stream today, apparently. Um, that is where the questions have taken me, and I am, uh, uh honor bound to, uh, do as, as chat asks. Um, so in, uh, third edition, um, you could multi-class, which is to say you could take levels in, uh, multiple classes, which was a really cool system. It, it basically, um, the, it, it had the effect of actually reducing, um, your kind of your overall power. Like if, if let's say that you're playing a multi-class, um, 
uh, wizard cleric, right? Um, by, let's say that you've taken two levels in wizard and three in cleric, right? Um, or let, let's say you're a level six character and um, you, you've taken three levels in both. Um, in, oh, that, actually, honestly, that is not a, a bad point, Biggs. You and I did play like two rounds of Pathfinder via Skype at one point, and it was fun. Um, and yes, uh, cha Chaotic Neutral has entered chat. Um, uh, but yeah, so you, as, 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 uh, a spellcaster of of sort of those two descriptions. That's a really weird way of putting it. You've got three levels in both. That means that the highest le like tier level of spell that you can cast is essentially like a. It, they're called second level spells, but that's confusing because it sounds like you as a second level caster would be able to do those, but that's not the case. You get access to second level spells as like a third level wizard. So I I I think of them as like like spell tiers, right? Um, so as a um, as a sixth level character multi-classing between those two spellcasters, um, you have access to second tier spells of both spell lists, of the wizard list and the cleric list. Um, as opposed to, let's say you're a sixth level wizard, you've been casting third tier spells um, since level five. Um... But, so, like, your your raw power as a character is going to take a bit of a hit. But the upshot is, um, is greater utility. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus, oh, no. I didn't mean to do that. Shit, I kind of thought that might happen, but I didn't necessarily think it would. Um, oh, well. Into the fire you go. Shows what I that 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 show that'll show me to throw things off of balconies. Um, it basically crams more utility into a single character, and that's that's a neat thing uh, to do. Um, so so you can multi-class between the uh, the base classes. Then you have a separate set of classes. Um, because the base classes are like, you know, fighter, rogue, wizard, cleric, uh, druid, um, bard, sorcerer, barbarian. Am, am I going to list off all of them? Rogue, paladin, ranger. Is that all of them? Monk. I might have listed off all of them. If I haven't, I listed off most of them. Um, uh, yes, big country. We are playing um, Viscera Cleanup Detail, Santa's Rampage, which is a DLC for the main Viscera Cleanup Detail. We are cleaning up uh, Santa's workshop after a real uh, hell of a party. Um, and by party, I mean Santa got a little bit overworked, a little bit overstressed, and uh, I think he found his comfort um, in the, the sturdy grip of a shotgun and went a little bit nuts. But it's okay. We're, we're making good uh, good time. We, we've been streaming for about an hour, which honestly it doesn't feel like it. Um, but that's probably because... <clears throat> excuse me. Let me sit, take a sip of water. But that's uh, probably just because it's been a relatively uh, low-stress uh, gaming environment. Can I light one of these candles? Uh, no, I cannot. Oh, well, into the fire you go. Um, but yeah, we're, we're making pretty good progress, actually. This, um, this room was in a much worse state uh, when we initially came in. This, this table is still kind of a little bit fucky. Um, let's grab the elf corpse. Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Just, just paint the fucking floor. I don't care. Um, I do. That was a silly move to do, but whatever. Need a little bit more of the old mop action. Um, uh, but anyway, yes, to, to, to Born Loser's point, you're, you're basically a hybrid at that point. Now, prestige classes are a special kind of class that you can... Uh, take levels in um, by way of multi-classing only after you fulfill certain uh, requirements. That was a big old lag spike we just hit there. Um, 
it's almost like the Unreal Engine wasn't necessarily built for something like this, but that's okay. Um, and again, as, as previously mentioned, there's a lot of objects uh, in, in this space right now, but we're gonna, we're gonna deal with that. Um, uh, let's see here. Ender God, uh, Santa had some spiked eggnog, uh, which is why he went insane and killed a bunch of elves. Um, and um, uh, Anonymous, yes, um, Born Loser actually was uh, uh, incommunicado with me uh, the other day and, and told me about Fat Man. I watched the trailer, it actually looks kind of interesting. I'm uh, not a big Mel Gibson fan, um, for which is mostly connected to uh, some of his uh, uh, personal views and uh, the, uh, the passion uh, as a sort of expression, perhaps, of those. But um, he's he's still he's a fine actor nonetheless, and um, uh, you know that that's probably a movie that I would check out at some point um, if it if I came across it in the wild. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, uh, um, uh, where what was I saying? Yeah, uh, proceed classes. Um, uh, there, there are special types of classes that you can start taking levels in after you meet a certain set of requirements. And I'm, I'm looping back around, eventually, uh, to the question that originally prompted this whole uh, digression, which was about um, classes locked behind uh, an evil alignment. Um, so an example of a very simple uh, prestige class, going along with our existing example, is the Mystic Thurg. Uh, which is a um, it's a prestige class that you can start taking levels in uh, once you have access to uh, divine and arcane spells of second of the second spell tier, right? Um, and I, I'm doing this like shelf jester with my hands as if you can see me. Um, although it, eventually, if I ever do turn on my webcam for one of these streams, which I may eventually, it's hard to say. Um, uh, you will see how truly enormous my drinking vessel is, because it's, it's quite substantial. Um, big old, big old tanker to water of God's great. Um, probably, after my mic and my computer itself, it is probably the third most important piece of streaming equipment I have. Um, just because it keeps my drink nice and cool, and it holds a lot of it. Um... But anyway, yeah, so the Mystic Thurg, um, it lets you basically um, start getting access to those spell lists, like, in parallel. So um, it, it basically makes that, that, that hybrid sort of worth it. You don't get, like, uh, other bonuses. So, like, clerics have the ability to turn undead. That improves um, with uh, as they level. Uh, you don't get that as a Mystic Thurg. Um uh, wizards get access to a certain list of bonus feats as they level up. You don't get access to that as a Mystic Thurg, but uh, you have basically the broadest spell list of any character, um, like any like class setup, and that's pretty cool. Um, uh, so, answering the original question now, um, the one example of a class that I can think of that is locked behind the evil alignment is the Black Guard, um, which is a class that is specifically designed uh, for characters who have become fallen paladins. Um, so I mentioned that paladins have to, um, yes, uh, to, to to your point, born uh, biggest uh, biggest loser, <laughs> big country. That's that biggest loser is the chat participant that will happen uh, should big country and born loser have a child. Um, uh, but um, to, to Big Country's question, yes, we will do Phasmophobia in 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 due time, my friend. We're gonna make it happen, Captain. Um, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm glad to do it. And um, uh, Ender God, have I played um, a Pixel Dungeon? No, I have not. But honestly, just from the name, it sounds like something I'd be into. Um, uh, it's uh, it's definitely something that I will check out. Um, if you want to give me like the elevator pitch for it, I, I'd certainly. Uh, certainly be interested in hearing that. Um, 
And uh, while while you do that, I will uh, continue. So yeah, so I, I mentioned um, uh, that um, that paladins are they they are required to maintain a lawful good alignment now. And there's actually, there's some other things that, um, there's another, co like, a, no, 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 I'm thinking of knights. Knights have to follow another code of ethics, but paladins are just straightforward. You just have to maintain a lawful good alignment. And that is, like, like, you have to live that out. Like, if you, if you start doing things that are chaotic or, um, or evil, like, you can lose, uh, that alignment. You can suffer that. And, um, uh, you... I guess I think paladins actually do have like a, a code of ethics that they also need to follow because I know that there's atonement rules for them. There, there's a divine spell uh, called atonement that is so. For, for context, um, you, you have like two separate types of spells in the game. You have arcane spells, which are cast by um, uh, in in the base game uh, class set at least. They're cast by sorcerers and wizards and bards. Um, and... Those are... Um, hold on, I'm, I'm getting uh, distressed by... Or I'm, I'm <laughs> distressed, that's a Freudian slip there. I'm getting distracted by chat uh, talking about my, my fantastic vocal range um, uh, during the Outlast stream, which was very fun. Um, bit spooky, but fun, um, and uh, and something that will be revisited uh, eventually. By the way, I, I apologize. I went back and listened back to a little bit of it, and I realized that my audio was kind of echoey. That is a function of the jank ass uh, dual mic streaming setup that I have, where um, I, I have my good mic and I have my less good mic, and the less good mic is picking up is very strongly picking up audio uh, as well as like okay. Basically, there, there's one mic that is picking up uh, audio from just, from mostly just me. Like, you can hear my wife Julia in the background faintly on that mic. But, like, it's it's mostly me. And then there's the, um, my old Snowball mic, which is picking up both her audio and my audio, uh, which caused that, that echoey effect. I, I don't know beyond that what was the cause, because that was not nearly as much of an issue um, in the, uh, in the last collaborative stream that I did, uh, with her, which was the, um, the amnesia stream, but I might work on doing something a little bit different. Honestly, I might just use the omnidirectional setting on my mic next time I stream with her. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah. Um, I I'm glad that everyone seemed to enjoy it in spite of the, um, the audio problems. That's, uh, it's always gratifying to hear that people enjoy the streams. Um, oh, Jesus. My leg fell out of my bucket. Um, let's see here. T -t 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 -t. Um, from Ender God, uh, referring to Pixel Dungeon, it is a game you would, uh, be into. It's actually very fun. Um, uh, well, I will, uh, Pixel Dungeon, I'll have to remember that, but I'll, I'll definitely, uh, look into that, and I might even, uh, stream that. Uh... Because, you know, I think I, I gotta give the people what they want. Um, but anyway. Um, yeah, so if if you fall from grace as a paladin, um, you, and actually give me one second. You're gonna get me, uh, meat. Thank you. Um, uh, if you fall from grace as a paladin, you basically lose all of the paladin special abilities. So you lose their limited spell casting, you lose their lay on hands healing ability, um, you can't summon your special mount. Uh, it's it's pretty terrible. And you have to sort of return to the straight and narrow and probably get an atonement spell. Um, which I was explaining that. Uh, so, like, our arcane spells are... They're, they're basically... Um, Sort of like magical science, basically. Um, at least wizardry is. Uh, sorcerer is a little bit different, but the functionally the the arcane spells are more of like flashy. Those are your big damage dealing spells, uh, transformations, stuff like that. Um, the divine spells literally represent the spellcaster like entreating, um, 
divine or like natural forces um, to 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 serve them. So for clerics, like their their spell casting literally represents answered prayers, um, and and an atonement is. Uh, basically, like connecting to that that cleric's god and, and getting uh, forgiveness for the actions of an individual, paladin or otherwise. Now, um, oh, I see. So, Pixel Dungeon is a mobile game. Well, that's not it's not inconceivable. I don't exactly know what that would entail, but that's that's not impossible. Um, I, I, I will look into that and see if it's doable. Honestly, I will. Um, ooh, Big Country is planning on returning to the streaming game. It is. It's good to have you back, Bigs. Um, uh, we, we you have been missed in chat and on stream. Um, uh, I, I I would rep. I would say uh, Oblivion. Uh, to stream, but I, I know that that's not going to happen, and I've, I've come to accept that. Um, but, um... <clears throat> another... Oh, yeah, but actually, I'm honest, that's not a bad idea. Binding of Isaac is, is always a good time. Um, and I, I will say, um, were it not for The Sims, um, The Binding of Isaac would probably be, like, the thing that my, um, was, like, the, the sort of the, the backbone of my streaming, uh, schedule, but I'm, I'm very much enjoying, uh, doing The Sims 4, um, quite a lot, actually. Um, I'm really liking, um, uh, the way that Twig is shaping up, even just from, like, a visual standpoint it's it's fun making kind of like a weirder a weirder sim that's not just like an alien or a vampire but like sort of i'm i'm making my own occult basically and that's that's cool um and i'm also i'm really looking forward to the the next stream um oh hell yes big country um if even if i'm not able to be there in chat, which, which I may not, I'm probably gonna, if you're streaming right after me, I'm gonna be cooking, um, but I will definitely, if you stream out last, I will definitely give that, uh, a look, um, at some point, um, I, I would be very curious to see how you compare to, uh, to, 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 to myself and, and Julia, um, but, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next, uh, sim stream, which, by the way, as, as, a, as a heads up, um, this is going to be the last stream before the holidays um, commence. Uh, the um, hold on one second. Jill, did you put the meat out on the uh, the counter or in the fridge? Good. Sorry, I'm 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 prepping to thaw some pork for dinner. Um, I'm making some kind of delicious, like, uh, pork bowls of some description. HelloFresh is a, is a wonderful service. Um, anyway. Uh, hash, hashtag not sponsored. Um, um, but, uh, um, what was I saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really looking... Oh, yeah, my, my, the schedule. Um, uh, my next stream will be on December the 27th at the typical time, 3.30 to 5.30. Um, and I'm going to say at least half of that stream is probably going to be uh, expanding the house. Finally breaking the seal on, on Tiny House, on the micro house, I should say, and actually upgrading to a 64-tile... Uh, tiny home, as opposed to the 32 tile micro home that we've currently been in. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see how much we can cram in. This leg is like fucking stuck in the floorboards, and it's annoying me. 
I mean, the game doesn't seem to be enjoying it either. Um, there appear to be beams of light coming out through this leg. Um, there we go. I knew we'd knock it loose eventually. Um, anyway. Um, let's see here. T -t 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 um... That that is true, born loser. I will I will not be able to watch um, uh, Biggs once he gets past the point that I am at in Outlast. Um, well, it's 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 worth mentioning, uh, Big Country, that you have like seen what the game has in store for you early on, uh, thanks to me trailblazing. So. You know, if, if if I'd watched ahead of time, I probably wouldn't have been, like, a third as much of the big weenie that I was. Um, maybe a quarter. But still, there would have been less general weenieing around, because I, I would have known when the spoops were coming. I wouldn't have spent all that time uh, uh, glancing furtively at Larry, my good hallway friend Larry, trying to figure out if I needed to, if I could sneak around him or not. But anyway, um, yeah, no, the, um, the, the Sims stream, the home renovation stream on the 27th, uh, very much looking forward to it. I'm hoping that all of you will show up and have a grand old time with me as I figure out how I'm going to make a 64 tile home that can support, uh, four people. But hey, I have a 32 tile home that could support three. So, anything is possible. Uh, you just have to believe. Uh, now, big country. Um, I thought I had heard that that DLC was being delayed. Could you, could chat do some Googling for me um, to figure out if the Repentance DLC is still coming out on um, on the 31st? Because if it is, then yeah, uh, stream's probably gonna be happening. Um, I actually, there's a chance, Biggs, that you might have to go in ahead of me on that. Um, because they're, I know that they're going to be, uh, Jesus, I'm going to throw away these boards before I fucking kill myself on them. Um, I know that they're going to be, uh, New Year's Eve festivities that I am in attendance for. It's just a matter of, uh, of when those are going down. But, um, if not on the 31st, then definitely on the 1st, um, I will be streaming some of the Repentance as well. Assuming this fucking board is literally in my way. Um, while I'm holding it. That's bizarre. Um, okay, good. So, I was wrong. It is not being uh, delayed. Good to know. It'll be a lovely late Christmas present from Edmund McMillan and the rest of the Isaac team to the world. Um, that'll actually be a lot of fun. Um, I'll get to jump back into Isaac. I'll still be using the same save file, probably, so I'll have some work ahead of me. But, should be fun. I'm reading a chat. Um, uh, yeah. So that'll be... Good stuff. Either the 31st or the first of the year. Hey, we, we be, we'll begin as we mean to go on, playing The Binding of Isaac uh, all year long, baby. Um, <laughs> my wife just whispered to me from the kitchen, probably the first, uh, which is fine. Um, Happy wife, happy life. Although, she'd probably be just as happy if I didn't play The Binding of Isaac at, at all, because this has previously been mentioned on this uh, on this channel. She is not a big fan of Isaac, which I get. It's a weird-looking, kind of off-putting game with 
lots of, <laughs> frankly, uh, contextually horrible stuff that once you kind of get used to the game, you kind of see past. Um, but uh, I, I get it. I do understand. Um. Anyway, what 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 is it? Twenty second? Yeah. Got a good old uh, the good old Christmas. Just a few days away. Should be fun. Um. Uh, we're doing a little bit of, of traveling this year, actually. We've got to see all the, uh, the various family. I, I will be seeing all of my immediate family and my immediate family-in-law. Uh, oh, shit. That's a big old mess, isn't it? Um, with the exception of... Motherfucker. Oh, god damn it! I blew up! Shit, I, I thought I would be able to get away from it faster. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, the delay on the stream is, uh, is pretty substantial. Um, oh well. One man's, oh, see, you can, oh, there, there I go, there are my bits. There's my boot. And, uh, well, that was, uh, highly unfortunate, as, uh, as Big Country would say. Sorry, I'm, I'm being distracted again by, uh, by chat. Um, uh, Anonymous is apparently going to be introducing uh, Born Loser to the Delights of Scrabble, a game that my wife played for the first time the other day and absolutely uh, destroyed at. Um, like, she, she turned frickin' table into quotable on, like, a double word score or something. It was ridiculous. It was impressive, but it was ridiculous. Um... The only reason that she didn't win is because we allowed the word dunkery to pass, which I still think is not uh, uh, improper, but I didn't... The, 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 a quorum was reached, and uh, it was allowed to, to stand. Um, but, uh... But yeah, I'll, I'll be seeing all of my immediate family and, um, oh, there's, there's my head, huh? I was a woman the whole time. That's, that's the grand reveal of this. Um, uh, with the exception of my brother and his wife. Uh, they are on the other side of the country and thus will not be in attendance. But, you know, I'm sure a Zoom call will happen or a FaceTime call or something will happen, uh, eventually at some point. Um... But, um, uh, as, as a component of all that traveling, um, our, our pup, our adorable little, uh, long-haired dachshund Otto, uh, long-haired mini dachshund, I should say, um, will also be traveling, so hopefully that all goes without too much incident. Yeah, it'll be his first time away from home. Uh, our recent, well, re I say recent, it happened in July, um, our recent, uh, move notwithstanding, um, it'll be his first time, like, traveling, not as part of, of changing homes, um, or going to the vet, true, um, But, uh, yeah, I'll be all good stuff. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a cheerful time of the year, theoretically, anyway. Um, this, uh, it's, it's been a humdinger of a year. We, we thought, like, 2016 was, was a real bad one, uh, but it, it turns out that 
life had another another surprise up its sleeve. That surprise was a grotesquely mis was a, a a pandemic bad enough as it was that was also then sort of grotesquely mismanaged. But uh, you know, it's almost over in a couple different ways. So. We'll, uh, we'll hope that 2021 shows a, a bit of improvement on the uh, on the old formula. To get up on the table, I want to be up on the table. Got to clean up my leftover chunks. The chunks of me. I didn't realize that my freaking bucket dispenser could throw dynamite at me. That seems unfair. And 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 chat is concurring. Uh, bad year confirmed. Um, but um, you know. We uh, we've endured it. Uh, didn't didn't get all of us this uh, 2020. Um, weirdly, it's it's actually been like a like a personally all right year for me. Like I uh, we moved uh, the, the the wife and I did. Um, I've uh, been back in school. That's going well. Um, it's stressful. It's a lot of work. And actually, that is probably going to... Um, I'm not sure yet, like, exactly what the streaming schedule is going to look like um, uh, during the uh, the spring time, because I've got a lot of classes on my on my plate. But uh, this is something that I have... I have too much fun streaming to give it up entirely. I'm going to figure out a way of, of making it work with my schedule, even if I have to cut back down to just one stream a week or something, um, or just, like, maybe even just streaming, uh, once on the weekends, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing this, because I'm really, I've, I've been seriously enjoying streaming, like, that's been, I'd honestly say that that's, like, been one of the really good things, that's among the good things that has happened to me this year, I'm getting into a bit of a reflective mode, um, I've, I've discovered this as a sort of, as a as a, a creative and a performative uh, outlet, that's also been like a really nice social thing, um, and uh, you know, it's been really fun. I've I've enjoyed the heck out of it, um, and I yes, my my wife was just apologizing for any uh, sounds emanating from the kitchen. Honestly, the um, just double check. Hopefully, my mic setup is such that you shouldn't really be hearing much of it. Um, but uh, if if you do know that she's made, it's it's in the uh, it's all in the name of making delicious from scratch gingerbread cookies. So you know, I'll just have to deal. Let me catch up with chat. Da da da. Um. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, distracted reading, reading through chat, um, uh, but yeah, uh, uh Anonymous complimenting, uh, myself and Big Country for the streams, and I, and we, we, we do appreciate it, echoing, uh, Biggs's point, um, it's, uh, it's been, it's been really fun, and I, I intend to keep on doing this for as long as as people want to watch um and honestly i'm, I'm not sure if, if ender god is still in chat if you are hello sir um your your presence is his ender god's presence in chat has honestly been really uh nice because it, it indicates that i that this can actually reach like at least a slightly wider audience of people who are 
um, interested enough to stick around. Like, I, I think that that has actually been sort of something that I, I never really got um, in uh, with the regular video making because it's not as interactive a process. Um, but the idea that I could actually, like, attract to myself, like, fans of my body of work, or at least people who are enjoying it enough to, like, stick around and, and come back. And that's really cool, because, like, up, up, up until now, it's been mostly just reactions from, like, people I know, which is still very nice and appreciated. You know, I, I don't want to say that it's not, because it is. But, um, it's just, I think it's just different that I've, I've you know, been able to bring in... Uh, attention for at least, you know, one person who I wasn't able to, like, directly, personally ask, like, hey, would, would you check out this thing that I'm doing? Um, and that's cool. And uh, it, it makes me hopeful that I'll be able to attract even more uh, new people to the uh, to the channel and to the streams. And, um, you know, I, I, I have, rest assured, um, I, I have no like, financial ambitions for this. Um, I, I have, you know, I, I take a realistic view of these things. Um, uh, but, you know, it's... And, and even if it was just people that I know watching it, like, I would still be having an absolute blast streaming, and I would absolutely keep doing it, because I'm having fun. And, and like I said, it, it's a nice sort of crossroads between, like, the social... Um, the creative and uh, the performative, and it's 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 it, that's good stuff. Uh, now let's um, with the uh, the last little bit of our stream, I feel like we've made pretty good progress um, in both like this part of the workshop, the main section of the workshop. I feel like the ups the office is still pretty in is in good shape. Yeah, the office is in very good shape. Um, we've actually gotten a fair amount done. On the stream, and you can tell because our frame rate has improved substantially. Um, it's much more consistent now. Uh, I think we actually have. Might be a, a little bit more blood around, but it looks like the upstairs is mostly in good shape. Um, let's grab our bucket. Um, no. Mm, no. I, I think I mistook the uh, the tinsel. For, um, for blood. And, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just getting to this, uh, chat now. Um, uh, Born Loser, uh, you're not hearing anything. I, I'm afraid I, you'll have to expand upon what you mean. Um, because whatever it is that you want to hear, my dude, I am, I am here for my audience. Um, I, I want you to feel heard. Or responded to, or, you know. What it, whatever it is that you are seeking, whatever validation it is that you need from me, I will... Yes, uh, to Anonymous's point, uh, Biggs, you, you do have to play um, Outlast in the dark. Um, preferably with... Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, frankly, with, with better headphones than mine. Um, so you can really get the, uh, the sense that the bad touches are coming. Um, but again, like, you've got... Um, uh, you, you've already had a preview of, like, what's coming for you in the first chunk of the game. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, thank you, Born Loser. Um, well, that shows my, uh, my paranoia coming through. Um, good news, Julia, they cannot hear you in the kitchen. Uh, which is good. We we want this to be a. Uh, <laughs> when I say, 
I say which is good. That is it's like women are meant to be seen, not heard. But no, it's it's just it is good that I am giving my audience a nice, clean, focused audio experience. I freaking uh, it's it's actually it's very appropriate that I'm doing this uh, this festive stream um, and talking about how awesome uh, streaming has been for me uh, the, this past little bit because. Um, uh, this microphone was actually a Christmas gift that I, I never actually used um, uh, for any of my YouTube related stuff. There was like one or two things that I recorded but never got around to editing that I used the, uh, the microphone for. Um, but... Um, but yeah, so so it is perhaps appropriate that um, that this Christmas gift from last year is is finally seeing uh, some use, which is good. Um, come on, get in the bucket, whatever. Get in that bucket. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, uh, Born Loser, uh, so what did you make of Outlast from what you played? I enjoyed it, you know? It's, um, like, <sighs> my nerves being what they are, like, playing scary games is always a bit of a, a, a harrowing experience, but, like, I, I enjoy... Um, that sort of, uh, I don't want to say Metroidvania, because that, that's not quite accurate, but, like, I like that kind of confined to a relatively small space solving, uh, puzzles to, to get your way out. Um, I say puzzles, like, 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 sort of doing tasks to, to, to expand the area and, and you know, you, you, you get what I'm saying, I think. Um, it's, uh, good. I, I, I guess I like the idea of kind of getting to be pretty familiar with a space over time. Um, and, and to that point, I, I'd probably enjoy, uh, Resident Evil 7, um, if I could ever get the, uh, get up the stones to, to play that one as well. Um, do not want to put that in there, because that will actually dirty the water. Um, we're going to use this for dynamite disposal. What did you do differently to it? Did you use as much flour as you were supposed to? What grows? Oh, well, the, f the flour isn't going to be what made them... I, mean, I would add more flour. If it's... You know, the dough should not be that sticky. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm giving, like... Backseat baking advice. I see your hands. There's dough that's proving to me far stickier than it probably should. Because someone isn't following the damn recipe. Folks, is it is it any surprise really that um, that I'm the one who's in charge of the uh, most the majority of the cooking around here? Just saying. Yeah, I I think it was an issue of it just being uh, too too wet. Um, Julia, did you add enough butter? Chad is asking. I did. Okay, yes. The, the, the butter levels are correct. Um, it's just that she put uh, too little flour in because I guess last time they, they did rise a lot, um, but there's nothing wrong with that. Um, they were just sort of puffier cookies. Um, supposed to roll what? No, uh -uh. once once they're cut out, you're you're not supposed to roll them out further. Yeah, 
in any event, uh, you, you good people of chat have not come for the great American baking uh, conversation. Um, that, that was a reach of a joke, and you all know it. Um, my wife laughed at that because she has to. Um, uh, but anyway... Um, let's see here. We're actually... We might actually more or less wrap up this, uh, this job by the end of stream. I kind of wasn't expecting that. But, uh, you know, we, we've... Well, okay, there, there's my explosion mark from earlier. But that, that was simple enough to clean up. Um, I wasn't necessarily expecting that. But look at us. We're, we're actually... Yeah, we, we might actually be done by the end of the stream. That's cool. Um, let's see here. Um... Aha, we have confirmation now uh, from, from the kitchen that it was the uh, lack of flour. Um, uh, Anonymous in chat, Julia, is saying that um, uh, gingerbread has a lot of moisture and they are supposed to be typically, typically supposed to be fluffy. Um, t -t 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 Well, that's good. Um, but anyway, so, quick, chat. Um, I, I feel like I've rambled on about D&D &D for, for long enough. Last, like, 30, well, closer to 25 minutes now of stream. What am I to talk about while I clean up the stables and, like, probably burn more presents uh, once I'm done with that? Oh, Jesus. <sighs> I, I give up on this damn bucket. I give up on it. Julia is over there in the kitchen acting like she's goddamn Frankenstein over this dough. She wants me to touch the dough. Yep, that's dough, all right. Incidentally, for anyone who is who's keeping track of, of mysteries from streams past, um, this gingerbread, like homemade uh, gingerbread cookies, is what uh, Julia was working on. Uh, the the mystery treat that she was making uh, on on streams of of days gone by, uh, the time I did not know what she was doing. Um, so let's take this bucket very carefully and put it in the fire um oh chat chat wants me to talk about how you're better at hand at handling spooky shit than i am oh, really? here's the thing though chat is that like she has panicked reactions like at times that i don't um as as is evidenced by her preference which is mind-boggling to me um her preference for something like uh freaking outlast to bioshock now it's possible that we have not actually gotten to the worst part yet um and actually we were talking with some friends who who played outlast like at the beginning of the pandemic um and uh, who said that, th that we really have not gotten into the shit yet. Um, so we have that to look forward to. But, like, like I, like, like there, sure, there, there's some, like, atmospherically spooky stuff that goes on in, in Bioshock. But, like, you have a gun and you have a big old wrench that you can whack people over the head with. Um, like, like, she gets into combat situations where there are people, like, actively seeking to do her harm. Um... And, like, that's when she starts to, like, freak out a little bit. Whereas me, I'm like, okay, you know, the, the worst they can do is kill me. But that's not something that they're doing to, like, me physically. That's something that they're doing to my character. Whereas, like, I, Ned Finn, 
can be like directly scared and that is something that is happening to me personally um uh by like you know spooky things that jump out at you and go blah um which i'm like much like fucking five nights at freddy's i would never be able to do like that's i know my limits and that is past it um like something that is just all jump scares no fuck that um, like, not even for stream, not even for the lols. If, if I was told that I could, like, like, gain, like, a hundred new subscribers just by playing Five Nights at Freddy's on stream, which is extremely unlikely because I feel like that game's peak has passed. But even if you told me I could, and that I had to do it for, like, two, like, a pair of two-hour streams, and I would get a hundred new subscribers, I'd say no. I would, at least I would probably say no. I'd have to do a good hard think about it, but I'd probably say no. Um, because, like, that would be uh, agonizing for me. I just wouldn't have a fun time with it. Um, Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Um, Born Laser. Oh, there's more. There's much more referring to Outlast again. Um, uh, talking about... Uh, Anonymous saying that bad things happen. The bad people. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, Bi Bioshock has its jump scare moments for sure. Um, especially once the um, the Houdini splicers uh, come into things, which I've always... I, I always quite like their design. I was really annoyed that you couldn't... Um, get their power. I guess it would be hard to implement at the time. Um, you'd need a sort of, uh, like, Dishonored-style blink uh, power, which, by the way, when we come to, like, a logical breaking point in, um, in the Sims series, which might be, like, I don't know, that might be, like, the birth of another generation or the death of one, I'm not sure, but if we can get to a logical stopping point in there, maybe, like, when Twig gets married off or something, um, I'm gonna finish my Dishonored, uh, Flesh and Seal playthrough. I'm gonna do that on stream. Um, so that should be fun. Um. Uh, but let's see here. T -t 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 um, bad scenes, it's all bad. Uh, he has born loser, but hey, at least there aren't spiders, so all is well. Um, uh, yes, yes, I, I am also looking forward to see uh, born loser get got by... Um, uh, by Outlast. Although, again, he'll probably have to move past the point that I got to in my stream. Um, but at least it'll be something fun to look into uh, when when I can get around to it. Oh, Jesus. There's more guts. Nothing we can't handle. Alrighty then. 20 minutes left in the stream, folks. Can we clean up the majority of our mess? I think we can. We've only really got just a little bit left in the stables to do. Um, and, uh, and then it'll be all good. Hmm. <sighs> Honestly, I feel like I'm going to go a little bit crazy um, over the, uh, not crazy, but I'll, I'll be antsy to stream again um, by the time that we get back to it. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm complicating things for myself with my clumsiness uh, right at the end here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, no, I've actually, uh, Born Loser, I've never played a Resident Evil game. 
Never, except I played a teensy bit of, I think it was Resident Evil 5 or 6. Um, whichever one starts you off in Africa, I think, on the PlayStation 3, and it just did not click. Which is just as well, because I've heard that one's supposed to be pretty bad. These damn Nerf bullets on here. Oh god, I should not have just swept them all up. That's, they're going to be a pain to find. At least they're bright orange, so they stand out against the hay. Um... Let's see here. Um, uh, from Anonymous, uh, I gotta see... Well, I got to see uh, Born Loser play the Resident Evil 1. And let me tell you, it's a sight to behold. Um, uh, Born Loser really doesn't like opening morgue boxes. Honestly, I don't think I would want to either. Um, uh, Resident Evil would be a real treat for me, um, according to uh, uh, Born Loser. I might have to check that out at some point. Um, maybe... That will be the next um, a thing that I do on stream with Julia once uh, Outlast is done, because apparently uh, all we are allowed to stream together is scary games, um, which I'm okay with, because it's not like I'm going to be able to get up the guts to stream them without her, um, because she is my rock, and I depend upon her to give me, uh, uh, you know... The courage to go on. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, the, through the shadow of death, uh, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. And the thou in there. Uh, in, in, in the, um, I, I don't know if you know this, but the thou in that particular Bible verse is specifically referring to uh, streaming chats on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, some, that's some real prophecy right there. Um... But anyway, um, not as scary as Outlast, um, but it's a stronger game. It's on sale for 10 bucks. I might have to pick that up then. Um, uh, well, yes, Anonymous, we could do Stardew Valley together, but that would be defeating the fucking point. I play, I play Stardew Valley on my Switch in my off time. I have a fucking brewery. It's awesome. I've got so many goddamn barrels. Um... The stream, the streaming is for real games like The Sims 4. Um, uh, and and perhaps Pixel Dungeon if I can ever figure out how to uh, stream a mobile game, which I will look into. Um, but anyway, um. Let's see here. I, I, I might have to pick up um, uh, Resident Evil 7. Um, is is there, like, any special edition, definitive edition bullshit to worry about? Or is it just, like, base game, you're good? Um, cause they, all, they all seem to love putting out their frickin' many, many versions. Um... Although, at some point, I will convince, even if it's just on this channel, um, I will convince Julia to do a solo stream. It might not be anytime soon, but I'm going to work on her. Because, um, uh, like, she, she looks like an old pro in front of the, uh, in front of the mic when, when I hand the controls over to her. Um, so it's going to have to happen at some point. Um... Yeah, um, uh, my, my wife is a, uh, a teacher, God bless her heart, um, and she's gotten lots and lots of experience uh, managing chats and, uh, and all that uh, through virtual teaching this year as, as another example of just the weird shit that's gone down this year. All the virtual schooling has been a hell of a thing. Um, oh no. <laughs> well, folks, we all, we all know what this is. <laughs> oh, this won't be guiding any sleighs anytime soon, but we will put it in the chest as a memento. Um, close the chest. Never to be spoken of again. Um...
I mean, I, in, in fairness and honest, I like Stardew Valley as well. I just I don't think it'll be the sort of thing that I play on stream. Um, unless, I'm, unless I'm going for something like this. Um, a more shit. Uh, like a, a game that I can kind of play in the background while I talk talk more directly to chat. Um, but let me see here. Um, really clear, curious uh, to your thoughts on it. Um, like I said, it's a classic RE gameplay. Uh, we'll pretty much catch you up on the big deal 20-something years ago. Yeah, yeah, I, I think I'll, um, I'll check it out. Honestly, if, um, if I'm not mistaken, that game gives you a gun, uh, which might be, um, you know, all, all I need to almost act as, like, a, like, a, a totemic item of protection, right? Um, that gun might be all I need to, uh, to get me through, um, on my own, but who knows? Um, I, I like the idea of keeping that, um, how, how long is, um, is RE7? Um, lost the bottle. Oh, well. Um, I think we're done cleaning up all the blood, you guys, which is good. Um, which means that we don't need our buckets so much anymore. Um... Because uh, I, I I do think that like the uh, the next like more long term series that I do in lieu of the Sims like I said when we come to a stopping point will be Dishonored because I, I really like the idea of finishing up that series and the stream seems like an excellent uh, place to do it um, although I will say I will probably be interacting with chat a little bit less during that series just so that I can more fully embody uh, the old. The old Corvo character. Honestly, it's... I don't know. Y'all in chat probably want to see me do that live, huh? Um, uh, rather than doing it as a video series. Um, I don't know. I, I, I might go back to the old editing bay and, uh, and actually do that as a, as a regular video series. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to think on that. Uh... Um, t -t 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 so RE7 is about uh, 10 hours according to Born Loser. Um, nice and tight, he says. Um, uh, which, yeah, 10 hours is, is a pretty tight experience there. Um, so we could conceivably wrap that up over the course of, like, five streams. Um, which, you know, if, uh, if, if we did one stream... Oh, Jesus. Oh, so apparently... Well, I think that the, the bottle broke. But um, apparently the uh, Molotov cocktails aren't that big a deal thrown in the fire, which is good to know. Um, ooh, there's a little bit of blood there. Possibly caused by me. But yeah, doing, um, you know, one out of every eight streams, that would be, um, yeah, we get that done in, in about a year. So maybe... I don't know, maybe I'd have to brave at least some of that by myself. But, uh, you know. It could be good. And God knows I've, I've been known to hold on to things in my, uh, in my Steam inventory for a while without playing them. So I'll definitely pick up RE7. Probably now while it's on sale. Ten bucks is, ba is not bad at all. Um, uh... You know, for now I'm just gonna spin around to prove how you can get like really, really sideways. Because of this game's sort of wonky movement engine. Um So we were definitely right, I think, that the um the frame rate issue was a like a pol was like a polygon issue because uh our frames are all good now. Um hello Mr. Santa, I don't want any more stupid books. Again, you might give me the new ultra mega water blaster assault cannon, and I want a big extra extra fa XX5 one, so it will be bigger than Kenny's one. I'm going to fill it with acid, misspelled. From my daddy's shop and spray down old Mr. Uh, Crouch's car. That'll Mrs. Crouch's car. Uh, I'm calling the cops again. Now. Hurry up, Jesus! I understand why 
Santa went a little bit nutty. These these kids seem absolutely terrible. Yes, um, all of the uh, all of the letters in the the DLC are like that. Um, Except for this, I mean, a pony is a bit excessive, but you know, a bike and a clarinet are uh, reasonable. And and the slew, the name, the last name Slew Bottom seems kind of, you know, may, maybe cut that kid some slack. Um, Um, well, we actually, we already, uh, Anonymous, found out what the uh, Sticks of Dynamite do, and I believe we are out of dynamite as well. Um, uh, so we, <sighs> unfortunately cannot, unless we just keep going through buckets until we get a lit stick of dynamite, but that'll be a lit stick of dynamite, so we're not going to be able to get the timing right. I don't know. I mean, we, we did pretty good work um, in two hours, uh, which is which is nice. Um, I, honestly, I didn't expect us to, to get as far as we did, um, but we cleaned up the whole damn place, uh, more or less. Be a little bit, is that a little bit of schmaltz? That is a little bit of schmaltz. Um, you know, a little bit of... A little bit of blood in some of these, but uh, more or less, it's, uh, you know, actually did the job. I started to think what our, I mean, depending upon what all it is that we're actually supposed to clean up, I don't think we're supposed to clean up all the presents and, like, the uh, the ornaments and stuff. Um, the glass shards, we definitely are supposed to. Um... Now, now, big country. Not not to, to stir up controversy in the uh, the final moments of um, the stream, but uh, to my recollection, um, you've said that you're not a big fan of um, of Bioshock Infinite, and I would assume that that's because of the uh, the the radical change of setting, which is a shame because I think like Bioshock Infinite has some stuff that I'm not as big a fan of, particularly the two weapon limit. Um, but like, I think the story and setting in, in Infinite are phenomenal. I'm I'm a re like the the opening like hour of the game and the final hour of the game are both really good. And then I don't know, it, it's too padded out with combat for my taste. But the combat is fun enough um, and not frustrating. Uh, it's not too frustrating, even if you're like in a harder section of the game. Um, uh. But like that, that last hour is so freaking good. Um, oh, there was an elf named Whimsical Tiny Toes, and he's dead now, um, presumably. Um, t -t 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 I don't know, I, 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 I can agree, Born Loser, that the opening is pretty, um, pretty on rails. It's not, um, I'm trying to think of other games that have, like, really, really good openings that are more, I don't know. Um, I, 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 I see what you're saying, but I still think that it's, like, it's a good example of what the game, ooh, that's blood. Um, I don't know, I, I just, I think that the game presents itself very well. I like the, uh the the setup the introduction to um to columbia um it's possible that i'm just more uh positively inclined uh to that sort of thing um because like the, the the ending is pretty on rails as well i guess i i, I appreciate it's more s like um even if it is less interactive i i think i just really like the story that's being told um, and I'm willing to forgive it for being a little bit, uh, you know, draggy by the nose. Um, and the game is, is gorgeous, and that's not nothing. Let's see 
see here. Um, got this character stabbing and mopping are the same thing. Hell yeah. Um, uh, da, da, da. See, and anonymous, you're, you're saying that I'm I'm throwing away. Um, uh, like these gifts and stuff, but I mean, apparently children are just shitty now. Uh, so, and it's not like they're getting delivered anyway. I'm just, I'm just looking, I'm just filling time at this point for the last three minutes of before I get to clock out for dinner. Um, so you know, yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna throw away a couple of presents that were uh, meant for good kids, but that's you know. Price of doing business. Wish I could fire these little toy guns. That would be nice, but I get why well, you can't. Um, gotcha, gotcha. Um, well, that, that's that's just me showing how how relatively little, uh, how relatively little Borderlands I've played. Um, Which, uh, hey, I'll, t I'll tell you what, uh, Borderlands, I guess it's 2, which is the game that I, which is the Borderlands game that I own. It's on the list of games that I intend to beat at some point. I'll tell you what, this, this stream, like, not like this particular stream, but like my whole streaming loadout, um, could have gone on a very different trajectory. Um, cause, uh, the, the, the first person that I told that I was streaming, um, was another uh, former coworker of mine. And, um, uh, I told her that I was going to start streaming and that I, I would like help in like determining that my, my tech was set up correctly. Um, you know, audio quality and all that. And then she asked, um, uh, what are you going to be playing? And I was like, uh, you know, this is the hottest release from 2009, Assassin's Creed 2. Cause that's the game that I was playing at the time. Cause I was on this long, long endurance quest to beat all of the games, or at least a lot of the games in my library that I hadn't beaten yet. Um, and, uh, I, I perhaps, I, uh, made the, uh, the error of being like, unless there's something else that, um, that you want to see. And she was like, RimWorld? And I was like, okay, I can do that. And so the trajectory of the stream diverted away from my grand quest into the sort of the, the, vi the variety mishmash of largely nonlinear, uh, experiences that it presently is. And I'm totally cool with that. Um, and uh, on that note, uh, sort of looking back at, at the very beginning of my streaming career, all those years ago, all those months ago, I mean, um, it is now 5.30. Um, and... Okay, I see. Okay, I get the Maggie reference now. All right, all right, all right. Um, yeah, and yes, born loser. I will bar buy RE seven. All right, I, I give you my word, um, and I might even play it on stream at some point in the coming uh, weeks. Who knows? Um, but until then. Uh, it's, it's now 5.30. I have dinner to make. We, we completed our freaking thing. Let's, let's clock out and see how we did. Um, here's the machine. Um, activate. Um, da, da, da. I am proud of my performance. I'm certain I will meet with approval. There we go. Let's see how we did. Let's see our score. Um, oh, I got promoted. Lovely. Um, so I guess we did... Hey, 97% performance. Not freaking bad, folks. I've, I don't think I've ever actually looked at the office for uh, for the DLC. There's there's the nose that we got. Okay. Lovely. Well, anyway, folks, I, I feel very accomplished now. Um, that's a very steep stairwell. Lovely. Um, anyway, until next time, folks.
thank you all very much for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, although I know that everyone watching has. But still, turn on the notification bell. Praise the sub. Um, until next time, I am Ned Finn. Thank you all very much for watching, and goodbye.